Find the critical numbers of the following function, intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing, and any relative extrema. Okay, so let's start with critical numbers, are the first thing that's mentioned in the problem. So a critical number is a value in the domain, and in this case, the domain are all numbers between 0 and 2 pi, not including 0, not including 2 pi, where the derivative is either equal to 0 or undefined. So we're going to need the derivative of the function. So our function is x over 2 plus cosine of x. So our derivative, f prime of x, should be equal to, well, the derivative of x over 2 is 1 over 2. And the derivative of the cosine function is negative sine of x. So critical numbers are values where the derivative is either 0 or undefined. Well, trigonometric, well, the sine function is never undefined. So when is this function equal to 0? Okay, so if we're solving 1 half minus sine of x is equal to 0, we're solving when is the sine function, when is sine of x equal to 1 half? And if we look at the if we look at the unit circle and we have those three special angles in each quadrant, well, the sine function is equal to one half at an angle of pi over six or five pi over six. So those are our two critical numbers, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And now, we could use these values to determine when the function is increasing or decreasing. So remember, the function is increasing when the first derivative is positive and decreasing when the first derivative is negative. So we could set up a sort of a number line here. Some some uh, people use a chart. I, I like a number line. So from zero to two pi, and then we have a, a critical number here, which is five pi over six, and another one here, which is oh sorry, pi over six is the first one. Pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Those are the places. So at pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6, those are the only places where the function could change from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So all we really need to do is uh, figure out the sign of the function. So is the function positive or negative in this first subinterval, in this middle subinterval, in this last subinterval? Okay, so between 0 and pi over 6, we're taking 1 half minus the sine of the value. And between 0 and pi over 6, the sine function is less than 1 half. So we're taking one half minus a number less than one half. So between zero and pi over six, the derivative is positive. So this is the so this is the number line for the derivative of the function. Uh, there's really no convenient number to plug in between zero and, and pi over six without a calculator, but we could just sort of deduce this based on uh, what we know about the, the sine function. And between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, let's say, uh, you know, we, we could plug in, you know, if you want, you could plug in a test value. So a value between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, we could plug in, I don't know, pi over 2. And the... Uh, the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. 
So we have one half minus one, which is a negative number. So the, the value of the derivative for any number between pi over six and five of pi over six will be negative. And again, from five pi over six to two pi, so that's gonna be this part of the unit circle down in here, you're taking one half minus a value less than one half. So again, that will be positive. Okay, so if we know the sign of the derivative, we know when the function is increasing and when the function is decreasing. So we could say the function is increasing from zero to pi over six and from five pi over six to two pi and the function is decreasing in that middle interval from pi over six to five pi over six. Now, what about the extrema? Well, if a function is increasing and then decreasing, it's gonna have a maximum value. It's a, say increasing or decreasing, it's gonna have a maximum value. And if the function is decreasing and then increasing, it's gonna have a minimum value. So it looks like there's a minimum, or there's a maximum value at pi over six. Now remember, the extrema, the maximum and minimum values, those are y values. So we know there is a max at x equals pi over six. So to determine what that maximum value is, what that relative maximum is, we have to plug pi over six back into the original function. So f of pi over six. So if we plug in pi over six for x, that's x over two, or pi over six over two, which is pi over 12, plus the cosine of pi over six, which is root three over two. And we could probably get a common denominator here pi over 12 plus uh, six root three over 12, or pi plus six root three over 12. So that is our relative maximum. relative maximum. And same thing for the minimum. If we know there is a minimum at the x value of five pi over six, we need to plug five pi over six into our function, f of five pi over six, to determine the value of that relative minimum, and our function is x over two plus cosine of x. So five pi over six over two, which would be five pi over 12, plus the cosine of five pi over six, which is again, root three over two. And we can uh, in the same way as with the maximum, we could get a common denominator. 
Oh, sorry, that's that should be a minus root 3 over 2 because we're in quadrant 2 for 5 pi over 6. So if we get a common denominator, that's 5 pi over 12 minus 6 root 3 over 12, which would be 5 pi minus 6 root 3 over 12. And that would be our relative minimum. Now in the last video we talked about absolute maximums and absolute minimums. Uh, since we're dealing with an open interval 0 to 2 pi, we don't know whether either of these are a relative uh, extrema or absolute extrema. We wouldn't know that without graphing the function. So it, it doesn't matter in the scope of this problem. We're not worried about absolute extrema. We're just looking for the relative extrema. Okay, that does it for this problem. I hope it was helpful.